Hi, welcome to the Bloom Show. This is Saheed with New Bloom Solutions and Above All Flowers. And the Bloom to you by New Bloom Solutions and Above All Flowers. The purpose of the Bloom Show is to help the floor industry innovate, connect, and bloom through connecting to information, people, resources, innovations, and just to learn more about people in general, right? Get to know people in a, in a personal level and also to feel free to ask people a question. So if you're talking to a vendor that you haven't spoken to in a long time or watching a vendor you haven't spoken to in a long time, ask a couple of questions. If there's something interesting, ask a couple of questions. But firstly, want to say thank you to the guests for joining us, the viewers for joining us. I truly, truly appreciate the time. And this show is really as a way for New Bloom and Above All Flowers or Above All Flowers and New Bloom Solutions to give back, to keep the industry completely connected. So this show is for you. So if you do like the show, please subscribe and click the little alert button because it keeps us inspired. And, and honestly, one of the greatest things is when I'm going to the show and someone says, thank you for doing the show. It keeps us educated. It keeps us informed. And we continue to do it. It's not the biggest show in the world. Um, it's not CNN. But in the flower industry, um, it seems to be helping connected and learning information. And for that, we are grateful that people are watching. Today, I'm having, oh, by the way, just came back from Ecuador. I know I'm wearing something a little different, but I got this amazing chompa in Mindo, and I thought I would rock it to represent the experience that I had in Ecuador. It was a lot of fun, great people, great food. I uh, got to go to Mindo with a couple friends with... Um, well, a couple of friends, including Jason from um, Penny and Clover, and got to experience that and in, in the culture of Ecuador. And not only was it amazing, but really getting to experience the culture of Ecuador was my favorite, one of my favorite parts. And that's why I thought I would rock this today. I am having a great guest today, which I have to tell a personal story. Um, I was reaching out to a couple of people when I first started my business uh, um, three years ago, and Thomas Maloney from Equimia, um was accepted my phone call we went to a bar we had a drink and he did what my whole model has been for for a long time and saying what can i do to help and that's i have the honor of having done that so shout out to everybody that's done that but today i have the honor of interviewing on uh, thomas and a personal thank you to thomas for showing me support and encouraging me and believing and that's what new bloom and above all flowers stands for is encouraging the new talent of our industry, people that are trying something different, doing something different to keep on going. So people like a Thomas, people like a Mike that continue to encourage people in our industry are a valuable asset to our industry because they continue to keep us uplifted and continue to let people know that they're there to support them. So again, thank you, Thomas. And I'll say that in a minute. But again, please allow me to introduce to you Thomas Maloney from Equimate. Hey, Zahid, how are you? How are you, Thomas? Thanks for joining. I see that you're rocking an Ecuadorian Panama or Ecuadorian hat, we're going to call them, because I, well, I got corrected the other day. They're not Panama hats. They're, no, they're sombreros de paja toquilla. Yeah, sombreros de paja toquilla. And they're originally from Ecuador, they say, no? Yes, yes. This is but, not Panamanian. This is Ecuadorian. Shout out to but, all my Ecuadorians. But, but supposedly, <laughs> what I've heard is that Panama imports the hats from Ecuador. And they just brand them as Panamanian hats. I don't know if it's the raw material or the actual hat, but yeah, these are Ecuadorian. There you and go. I'm not. I'm not really from Ecuador. I was born in Chile and grew up in the states. But um, but I my heart is in Ecuador. So so yeah, I know. I know that this is Ecuadorian for anybody Ecuadorian. that gets confused. Exactly. Yeah. Let me do a quick little shout out here. Someone just says Kuki. Um, says hello, Saheed. Hi, Kuki. Pleasure. I love that picture of the um the rose with the with the duct tape. Like the, the banana with the duct tape that sold for a million dollars in Miami. <laughs> oh wow! So, yeah, it's crazy. It was it was uh, art basil. But um, thank you, Kuki. Please again ask questions, chime in, give a shout out to Thomas if you're a friend. Um, the guests love it to interact, so please feel free. But Thomas, thank you, man. I just saw you. I think the day before yesterday, or at least on on Friday, we were at the at the Expo, at Floor Expo. Tell us about your experience at Floor Expo. And I know that Ecuador is close to your heart, but tell us about your experience at Floor Expo. I mean, it was incredible to reconnect with everybody. I travel to Ecuador often, but to have everybody under the same roof, you know, and like be able to go up to all 
our vendor friends, all our clients that were there, and just like see people happy interacting. You know, Ecuador is a party. Like the show in Ecuador is not like any other flower show anywhere else. You know, this is it's just like you go straight to business, but you also network in a different way, like in a more humane level. On Thursday, there was a party. And um, some of us stayed until very late. Some some people left early, but um, it's it's an incredible place where you can learn about new trends, new flowers, new vendors, and reconnect with people or connect for that matter. So it's incredible! One of the grandest shows, or the grandest show I've ever been to within the flower industry. It well, was... that that too because of like how they set it up. Like if you if you saw, for example, Eden Rose's stand, like they built Hansel and Gretel's like house, you know, and they. They, they had a beautiful stand, um, you know, and like every stand was just like, like astonishing, you know? So like, yeah, it's it's different from anything that you're gonna see anywhere else. In the US, they don't do it like that. In Holland, they don't do it like that. It's it's Ecuador that produces the show so well. And every show, every booth has food, drinks, a theme, flowers. So it is pretty out of hand. Like you're just walking around eating appetizers all day. A lot of ceviche and appetizers all day and, yeah. and drinks. And then at one part, it's just like a big party. And yeah. everybody's just hanging out around five or four o'clock just, and drinks are flowing since 11 a.m. in the morning. I remember. Yeah, no, and, and it's very intense too, because if, if you do it right in the morning, you're visiting farms, then you go to the show. And if you know the right people, then you have dinners or, you know, that party I told you of and whatever. So it's like, you rest very little, but you you accomplish a lot, you know? Wait a minute, I have, a, I have another message from Cookie. That says the flower arrangements were stunning. Cookie, were you there? And if you were there, why didn't we connect? But um, <laughs> he was there. And, and I do have to mention a little plug is that we we did some interviews. So by Wednesday, we should be showing all the booths and interviews and things like that. Um, so you can get an inside experience of being Expo Float without being at Expo Float. Yeah, so that's what we're hoping to do. So Thomas, let's let's, let's dive in, my friend. Um, tell us who you are. Please introduce yourself. So I am the CEO and owner of Equamia Flowers in the U.S. and Logistic Pass in Ecuador. In the U.S., we're importers and distributors. Um, we service the U.S. and Canada. And then in Ecuador, we're, um, we're ex exporters for other countries. Um, most of our team is located in Ecuador. So like we do invoicing, procurement, coordinations, uh, customer service out of Ecuador. And then sales we do from here, from the States. The company is nine years old now, and um, and our focus is mainly Ecuador. I would say in on our pie, maybe like sixty percent of our product comes from Ecuador. Then um, another big chunk comes from Colombia. We do a lot from Chile too, um, Holland and Africa. You know, so we're kind of like a one-stop shop for for wholesalers, um, some retailers depending on on their business model, and um you know event designers and so on and i do have to mention is that in, this is important to who you are you are you are you have a degree in in logistics and taking your masters in what right now uh it's an executive mba at fiu but um yeah so like early on when i when i first started college i wanted to be an industrial engineer but um then like i we started business and it just wasn't possible to like run a business and study engineering. So um, I first got frustrated in a way, and then I found uh, supply chain management and I graduated from supply chain management, which like was perfect for the career path that I took, you know? So yeah. And my in Miami Day, that's how you and I connected that our professor sent me your information and then we sat down and, and I wanted to learn more about that degree, remember? Yeah, because if my, my memory is correct, you didn't know if you wanted to study marketing or logistics. So yeah, they sent exactly. you to me. And yeah. I was just pushing logistics on you because um, I think <laughs> I think the career of the future is logistics. It doesn't matter if you're selling flowers, potatoes, chips, like whatever you're selling, like logistics is, you know, like you have to get all these raw materials into one place, build the thing, whatever. So logistics is the, the job of the future. For, for and sure. as Thomas and I am, if... If you're watching the show and you're looking to get back into school or going into school and you want to learn more about logistics, reach out to Thomas. And Thomas will give you information and sit down with you and share with you because our goal is to help the floral industry grow. So I think that, they, again, that's a testament to you, Thomas. And, and once you do it at one person, you encourage other people to do it to others. So that, that's a great thing. Um, I have Andres here, Romero, saying Equamia is the best. 
So he's giving you a shout out. Thank you guys. We encourage shout outs and questions. We have, uh, what's that guy? Logistics all day. So Car Carlos La Roca, um, and he says processes. So logistics all day and processes. So uh, people are giving you a shout out, uh, Tom Tomas. Now, so please share how your company started. It's it's a cute story. So I I knew nothing about flowers. I didn't when, when we started the company in 2013. I I had no idea. I hadn't even thought of where a flower came from. You know, and um. So going back to like me being very little, I had met um, who went on to become my wife, Michelle. Then we, we um, they moved back to Ecuador. We reconnected through like social media. Michelle started traveling here, started going to Ecuador. And um, her and her family own a company in Ecuador called JV Flowers. And so they introduced me to the business. Um, I, I grew up doing sales, you know, like every job that I had was sales. And Michelle was here, um, opening up market, you know? So, so I started helping her. Um, it wasn't easy, you know, like entering, entering this market is not always easy and doing any sales for that matter. Like you hit a hundred um, contacts and you're lucky to get five, you know, that want to like do anything with you. So we started knocking on doors. We, uh, we visited some florists, brought samples. Something that helped was to say that our flowers were Ecuadorian. Like there's a big difference when you say like your flowers are from Ecuador than when you say, that like your roses are from Colombia because Colombia like they're looked at as as you know being smaller and whatever. So, you know, we first got got one client, then another, then another, then another. This kept growing. Um, I was the driver, the procurement person, the salesperson, and but this actually helped me because I since I didn't know anything about flowers, uh, through like my interactions with clients and like by going into their stores and whatever, I started learning about product. And um, I I always you know like like used every opportunity to learn so like say somebody would be like do you carry stock and i'll be like for sure <laughs> like do you need it for next week and then i'll like run back to the office and like look up stock um a funny story too like one day somebody asked me for tulips and i figured everything grew in ecuador so you know i started like hitting up farms in ecuador like who who's got tulips and they say no you gotta go to holland so then i contacted a dutch company they didn't care to do business with us because we were too small and then, um, but I still needed tulips. So I contacted another Dutch company. We first became their client and then we became their vendor actually. And like, we, we co-work a lot with this company. So then, you know, like they became a client and then people around life, like, like, I don't think you have ever sent me any contacts. Maybe yes, maybe not. I don't remember, but like these people refer us clients and like little by little, we built a name for our company. So, so yeah. That was the story. We are no longer partners or <laughs> married, Michelle and I, but it's somebody who I have um, great regard for. You know, like I, I don't know where my life would be now if if this hadn't happened. But definitely, I'm very very grateful for for like the time we spent and like the company we built and so on. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Thanks for sharing that. Thanks for sharing that. And you know, we always learn from others for sure. So I know you. Um... Wait, I understand you do special things for the people at the farm. And I think that that's kind of something Michelle was doing. But tell us about how you, you know, a shout out to, to uh, Jeff Fresh. I saw him at the farm and it's just amazing what they do. Tell us what you do as, as a part to give back to the community in Ecuador. So we ourselves don't own any farms. We do sometimes invest in some farms. Like we, yes. we you know, like we give them money so they can, you know, like, like grow some varieties or whatever. What we have is our own staff in Ecuador that do like office work. Okay, but um, many, many years ago, I met this guy from this gentleman from a company called Helbert Adebur, and his name is Ron Boss, B-O-S. And so when I met Ron, I was like, okay. oh, so you're the boss. And Ron looked at me and he goes, no, I'm not the boss. And in Dutch culture, we don't believe in that. Everybody's empowered, you know, whatever, whatever. And this caught my attention very much, you know, because in the U.S., like we're used to having managers and VPs and C-level executives and whatever. And, and there's like all the structure, you know, which in Holland they do have too. But um, but people still supposedly are empowered. So in our company, everybody, everybody has a role. Obviously, we have people that mainly do procurement, people that mainly do invoicing, whatever. But but in, in our company, like there really are no bosses, you know, and um, it's a very friendly environment. And I know most companies would tell you like, oh, it's a family and whatever. But in our company, really, we are a family. Like 
people don't leave our company. And the only time when they leave is when they're going to do something great. Like we have a guy right now uh, living in Montreal because he's doing a master's degree, still working for us in Montreal. We wow. have another one that's now moving to Dallas to, to study. You know, like like people usually leave our company for something like 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 great, not because they're upset or anything like that. So our guys are always happy. Um, I don't think I don't think any of them would ever tell you anything different. I wouldn't allow them. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> no, you you no, filter but, you filter it first. Yeah, but pre coronavirus <laughs> also we used to we used to give back to the community in Ecuador. So we used to like hold these events and we'll we'll bring gifts and like do a lunch and whatever for 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 people that were in need in Ecuador. So I hope that's something we can start again. But um Ecuador now it's 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 different. But like not so many months ago they were still like everybody wearing masks and they couldn't get together and so on. So hopefully that's something we can start in 2023 again. So it's a mixture of two. And and I know Ecuador is close to your heart. So tell us about that a little bit. You know how do how do you what's your love for Ecuador? I'm in love with Ecuador. Problem. Like I, Ecuador is just is it's an incredible place. Like it's so biodiverse. Within it one is. hour, the whole like like picture changes. You know, the people of Ecuador are incredible, hardworking people. Um, it's 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 affordable too. You know, like it's it's just an incredible place. And there's this misconception sometimes when people think of Latin America, they think it's dangerous and whatever. It is, depending on where you go. You know, but Ecuador is just an incredible place. It's it's a place. It's so blessed, man. Like you can put, you can plant anything over there, and you get, you know, like the, the those soils just blessed. It's beautiful skies. The, just in Quito, you have eleven different volcanoes that you can look at. An hour away, you have the rainforest. You have the Galapagos yeah. Islands. You have beach like. And, yeah. and Mindo, and I'll be posting a little reel on on Instagram today. Um, by the way, at New Moon Solutions, but I'll be I'll be posting a little reel of the uh, Mindo when we went to the waterfall sanctuary. My yeah, God. so it's, we actually went to the same hand. place because okay. I saw your stories on Instagram. We were yeah. there the day before. I hope we left it clean and looking good. For oh you. man, that's what that <laughs> was. That, <Yeah. laughs> that's why they were looking at me. Oh, you're from Miami? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, we had already been there. <laughs> So, so we have here um, Jennifer Gustav saying hola. 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 And then we have here, Cookie, do you import from Kenya? They're asking you, is logistics a challenge? Yes, but we actually do it. So those flowers go to Holland and from Holland we bring yeah. to the States. Exactly. So, so yeah, so, so we do bring African flowers, but through, through Holland. Again, to the to the guests that have joined us today, please make sure to ask some questions. Feel free to ask some questions to additional guests that have joined today, the, the viewers. So I know that you're working on a pretty cool innovation. Do you want to share that with us today? Yeah, it's something that we, we've actually been working for some time. So um, almost every system that we have in our company has been uh, made by us. Because when, when you're shopping for a system, you can either buy something that's already been made and it's been used by many companies, but it's like a little, a little like, like, like squared, right? Like you cannot go outside the box on this. Like if you need to make any changes, it costs a lot of money, time, whatever. So um, a few years ago, we decided to hire an IT company and we built our own like CRM system. And um, I don't know, I want to say like maybe six, five, six years ago when I started traveling to Holland, and I like discovered the Dutch flower auction and like how um, exporters in Holland operate where like they can do mixed custom boxes out of their warehouses and ship like a bunch of tulips and a bunch of hyacinth and so on in the same box. Um, mm -hmm. That called my attention. You know, that's something that we don't have in, in Latin America because there is no like centralized facility where everything comes to and, and then can be like mixed, you know. So but what we did realize is that we can actually through databases, we can give clients the option to um, mix custom their boxes, you know? So custom mix their boxes. And so um, we're building the system. We were building it before the pandemic, but then the pandemic happened and and it was, you know, like, like everybody that lived through the pandemic in business knows that like one day you were handling this and the next one this yeah. and so on. So like we had to like put it on hold besides logistics, are still like not good, but they're better now. And um, productions were, were complicated. So anyway, so we took it back up now. 
we're we're finishing it up and this is a system that's gonna work for wholesalers and retailers wholesalers can delegate access to their clients um it's called florex sales you know so like you can already go on the website florexcells.com and okay. you can like you can sales, like, how, how do you spell like sales on this one sales florex like flor x, x uh, sales yeah here spell, spell it for me so i can post it here go ahead florex f-l-o-r-e-x okay sales s-a-l-e-s dot com florexsales.com and you can watch like a demo video it'll give you an option to sign in but very few people have access to it for now because we're still like like um working through it so anyway so so like if a wholesaler wants to delegate access to their clients the client will see the wholesaler's logo kind of like what the dutch do with their web shops um or if it's a direct client of ours they'll see our logo yeah just like okay. that and gotcha. so It'll allow them to like at first when you first go in, you have five thousand products to choose from. But then as you're like adding product to your boxes, you can do solid boxes too if you want to. But but if you want to do a mixed box, as you add product, the system will only allow you to complete that box with something that can be mixed in the box because that grower, you know, like you have growers that have 150 varieties, some have 50. So depending on what you're picking, it'll let you customize your box. Um, and I'm hoping to have this ready by beginning of 2023, but we're not rushing it because the way I see it is that it's gotta be like super, super nice, perfect. If not, you're going to lose people's attention, you know? So, okay. so we're going to continue trying it out. One day we'll give you and some more people access to it so we can get feedback, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. once we feel comfortable and ready to launch it to like the world, then we're going to launch it. But I think it's something that's going to, that's going to change things in the future. Um, you know, we are dealing with with my generation. So I am a millennial, and the one that came after Gen Z, that want what they want when they want it. Um, I think we all struggle right now, say in fall, to get toffee roses and coffee breaks and like all these brown colors. You know what I mean? And yeah. and so so, but but this is because there's a new generation that's that they go on Instagram and that's what they want. So so we're gonna build something to to fill this gap. You know. Yeah, that's awesome. Innovation is the way of the future. It is. It is the. It is here, right? It's not even the way of the future. The way to continue to grow, basically. So it's a great. The other day, someone here. told me there was no way our industry could be um, digitalized. But actually, like although we sell something tangible, we still can digitalize sales and and procurement and distribution and so on. So yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, we're, that, we're 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 pretty good at making our own roadblocks. So the, yes. the idea of this show yeah. and other is break those roadblocks. If there's an excuse, there's a solution around it for sure, no matter what. Where yeah. the world is away. Yeah. Um, so we have wait, we got a question here. Let me make sure this is valid here. Um, Tom Tomas, what is new and exciting coming out of Ecuador? So many new flowers, but like like say we have a few growers that are trying out Helleboros in Ecuador. Um, I found a flower that I didn't know about. Um, a client had asked us for, wow. yeah, Helleboros are out of Ecuador. There's some farms trying out um, wow. orchids out of Ecuador. There's already okay. a grower of orchids in the in, in the rainforest, but they're not that nice. But there's growers trying to grow symbiums in Ecuador, and little by little, like they're getting new plants and they're and they're getting it. A few people have tried peonies out of Ecuador, but the problem is that the weather is not there. But you can actually. Um, build facilities to to um, allow the bulbs to like experience the weather conditions that they need in order to grow. Um, I found spray delphinium the other day that I like, I know so many flowers, but like, like by now, I'm like, you know, like very knowledgeable in flowers, but I had no idea spray delphinium existed, found that there's just so many flowers. Um, we visited one of the breeders and they had 4,000 varieties they were trying out, which is normal for them. And only a few will make it, make it out commercially, but there's just like so much um, in the works, you know, like this is an Ecuador, um, to my knowledge, you know, like it's already been in the flower industry for 40 years. Yeah. And, and, but now they're like on, like they're going at a hundred miles an hour, you know, like they're, they're, they're trying, there's a lot of people innovating over there, trying out new flowers. So yeah, so it's as, only going to get better. As Jennifer says, that is awesome, Tomas. Thank you. <laughs> so we have Joe Joe Vargas. What a cool video on the Florex website. So uh, Florex sales, right? So do take a look at that. Correct. So yeah. Florex sales. Sure. Take a look at that. The 
website is here. Let me see it real quick. The website is here. Just, just make sure to take a look at that if you like. Um, give me a second real quick. And then let me ask you another question. Um, how did the Ecuadorian protests affect your business? We heard a lot of the Ecuadorian protests from, from the, the major players um, from Mexico Flood, um, but was wondering how did it really, you know, from, from someone that was dealing with it um, and has connections to farms, how did it affect your business? So like like thankfully we were able to ship most of our product. I would say like like 95% of what we needed got here late, but it made it here. Um and depending on who you were dealing with, like where your vendors were located at, it, you know, this dependent on, on whether you were getting your product or not. In the southern part of Quito, it was close to impossible to get product from. But in the north, farms figured out a way in very painful ways though like there were people walking their boxes through like the forest They're, they were having to ship their trucks at three four in the morning they have to spend 10 hours on the road you know their trucks were being damaged it was it was complicated but we work with great people that I, i'm amazed to be honest with you some like i think most people would not be able to withstand something like that you know like like we're very blessed in america for example where like nobody's blocking roads and throwing rocks at you, you know, but in, in Ecuador, um, you know, the government and the indigenous people did not come to come to an agreement. And, and this is the second time that I, since I'm in the business that this has happened. Um, so we got the product here, um, but it was also like a lot of work, like even like us in our office, we were having to work like super late. Like sometimes a farm will call you at four in the morning, like, Hey, I can, we found you know these back roads and we can ship our truck to right now wow. what do you need you know so we would have to like get more inventory than we usually would carry because we don't carry too much inventory only nice things we carry an inventory so like we started carrying more inventory and and there was one time where i actually you know and i'm not a person that easily like breaks down or cries or anything but we have a stock farm in in la Tacunga, right this is on the southern part of quito and they they shipped their truck thinking that they had a way to get to the cargo agencies. And as they're driving, they get stopped by by the protesters. They get like brought out of the car and they applied indigenous justice on one of these people. Like there were three of them in the car and that is like pull down your pants and you get whipped, you know? So like like that was super sad. Like, you know, we're, we're, those flowers were meant for a beautiful event, a birthday or something like that. But people actually got hurt to get these flowers, you know? So, like, it was sad, um, little rest. But um, I'm very, very grateful for for the people we worked with, you know? Have you heard any updates? Because I know in October there was supposed to be some decisions and a recap. Have you heard anything? No, to be honest with you, no updates. Um, but, um, but, I mean, it's, look... People and people from around the world gotta understand how Ecuador works. Like you have a, a a main government, but you also have at least one million people that identify as indigenous, and they have like their own government on the side, and they have they they have needs, and they they have like some things that are legitimate. Some I don't know. Like we we also live in 2022, you know, and they should they should incorporate into like like modern society, which they do. You know, but you also have to be respectful. Like, this is their land. Like, even, you know, us sitting here in Miami, this is, this is, we, if, yeah, we're not, we're not 100% natives, you know, like, so mm -hmm. we have to respect this, you know, it's, it's important that we respect it, but they also, I think, need to respect, you know, that, like, you cannot be throwing rocks and hitting people and burning stuff, you know, just to, to get what you want, you know, um, but it, it's a complicated situation. It's, it's sad sometimes, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's complicated. It's a part of our business as well and, and things we have to work around and hopefully everybody could could come out with what they want out of it. But even with that, Ecuador is beautiful because I actually, like, so, okay, the protest ends and I needed to be in Ecuador, like, as soon as possible for something else. So the day after they, they came to an agreement, I flew to Ecuador. It looked like nothing had happened. They The streets were already clean, you know? So, I like... You this know, I was not... very impressed with that, Tony. Sorry to cut you off, but I was very impressed with the streets. Like, they're, they're, for most stuff, I've been in streets in Detroit, Michigan that have potholes bigger than what I saw in Ecuador and, and like, cold, you know, like Colorado even, where you'll see these streets and they're they're in damage because of the snow. Um, but I was very impressed with the highways. It was 
nice highways, man. Ecuador has some of the best highways in Latin America. In some Latin American countries, you cannot get on a highway. You have to fly small planes to get places. Ecuador yeah, has incredible yeah. highways. Like that highway you took to Mindo. It's, you know, awesome. one lane, not one down, but it's incredible. Yeah. That was perfectly fine, you know, and, and it's kind of like going to Key West. Um, yep. But going up the hills and getting really nauseous because of the altitude. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> but other than that, we have um, a Ciego Menesi um, saying congrats. I'm not sure about what, but thank you. Congrats is always welcome. <laughs> and then we have um, David Kaplan asking how safe is, is Ecuador these days? And I think we're, we're kind of answering that already. But um, It what, depends what, on where you go. I mean, Latin America is Latin America. You cannot be walking around the street with your cell phone out and your wallet out and your camera, you know? Yeah. Like, like, don't do that, you know? Be mindful of where you go, at what time, you know, at night you're walking and where you are and so on. But if you're not putting your... Like, really how dangerous it is depends on you. You know, nothing bad has ever happened to me. And I've spent a lot of time in Ecuador. You know, but um, it's not like from my mouth, you're never going to hear me say that Ecuador is a dangerous place because I don't I, I do think that you have to be careful like anywhere else. I come from Chile and Chile is like, I would say a little more developed, but still like things happen in Chile too. things happen in New York. You know, like the world is is complicated. So just be mindful if you if you don't don't have your wallet out, you know, like don't call robbers to come talk to you, you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, and and something I have to say is, and I, I encourage, and it's something I like to do is when you travel and you work your butt off all day, every day, and you're working at home and you go to another country, take a time to go somewhere else, but just then just a convention, right? Oh. Because it, it, the, the convention, the city may be very misunderstood. You know, Quito's a city. Quito eats Miami alive when it comes to the size and, and magnitude of hustle and bustle. Right. Um, and I've lived in Miami my whole life. And Miami to me is uh, you're grateful when you come back here because it's a small town, you know, um, when it comes to the pace almost. But, you know, going to Mindo allowed me not to leave Ecuador with a taste in my mouth like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to go back to this place because you get to go to Mindo and enjoy the people. The minute I walked into Mindo, I was relaxed. I was calm. It was beautiful. The people mm -hmm. were so mm -hmm. splendid. The food was great in, in most places. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, take a moment and enjoy where you're at, right? Can you talk about that a little bit? Like, it, it's such a important to enjoy the quality of life of just stop working. I think, I think it depends on where you are in your life. Like back in the day, I used to not do those things. I used to like book book trips to go visit clients or trade or whatever. And it was know. just like, get there, do what I got to do, go back, you know? But But now definitely and because it's it's important and you know th there's just so much more to life than just like working and but it's important like it, uh, that's another thing like i'm not the type of like millennial that like oh i want to live and the experiences and whatever no i think it's important to work you know to provide for your family to 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 be um to be on you know but but yeah. it's also important to discover you know like had you not gone to mindo maybe you would have thought that like ecuador just has rainy weather and you know it's cold, cold, cold and rainy you know and there's nothing but snow. Yeah. but like <laughs> as you were making your way down to to mindo you probably noticed that the foliage changes from like city foliage to like rainforest foliage yes. you know yes. and then you start noticing that the food tastes like like more natural and then the people are, you know, like, Sweet. like nice. And yeah, yeah. so no, definitely. I mean, so life have, is not just about work. So we have Alvaro here saying, keep up, Tomas, keep it up, Tomas, the new ambassador of Ecuador. And then we also have uh, Andres Romero again. Yes, the new ambassador of Ecuador. So <laughs> and you're wearing the hat and everything and you're rocking it. You just need a chopa like mine. So this is, I, I am, this is like, I'm a little kid in a candy store with this thing. And you have to see the details, man. Like it's so cool. But um, now let's ask some fun questions, man. Um, I like to ask these real quick and real fast and just have fun with them. What's your favorite food? Peruvian. Can be too. Cat, dog, or plant? I love all animals, but dogs. So you're a dog person. Favorite yes. sports team? painful but the miami the miami dolphins but the miami what um miami dolphins. yeah I'll, I'll keep on the miami <laughs> tortoises um the fa favorite flower um i think garden roses you think garden roses all right favorite yeah. plant favorite band 
I listen to everything. I grew up listening to like hip hop mostly, but um, like if you ask me what's on my on my Spotify right now, Red Hot Chili Peppers. So I listen to everything. And in Ecuador, Mindo, we were listening to Fonseca, the song about Las Flores. You know, oh, so like I listen to anything. Yeah. Favorite color? Blue. And um, what's your favorite one line dad joke? One line? That dad joke. I don't know. I'm not a father. <laughs> I don't know. What's, That's it. You want to have a dad joke? Like, what's your go-to joke? What's my go-to joke? I don't know. I have fun all day. To be honest with you, you cut me uh, off guard with that. I one, did catch you off guard. Anything. That was, yes. That was my yes. joke. That was my joke. Is catch, yeah. catch down on guard. So Good last one. and final, as this show is meant to connect people, and I have a, a, a knack and passion in connecting people, is there anybody you'd like to give a shout out to or anybody you'd like to connect with, you know, someone you've always wanted to meet, but you've always been difficult to connect or anything like that? No, well, I mean, you know, my team is the most important that I have. There's people who who put me on in the business from like the very beginning. Like there's this gentleman, uh, Javier Valdos Pinos, who I've learned so much from, you know, um, but just so many more people like any that, you know, like all this knowledge that I have and experience and everything didn't just like come into my brain out of nowhere. Like there's been so many people who have helped me along the way. Uh, so everybody, like if you're watching and if you're going to watch later, if if you're on my phone, you know, like shout out to you and um, to you too, by the way, you know, because you've been a great you, person man. in my life um, who I'd like to connect. Look, anybody that is serious, you know, like um, it, it, I, I listen to everybody. I talk to everybody. I talk a lot, actually. Like if you know me, you know that I don't ever shut up. But um. But like, if you're serious about about business, if you have questions, like anything that you want, give me a call, send me an email. I don't know if there's anybody that I've been like craving to talk to, because I, if I ever want to talk to anybody, I do, you know. But um, okay. if you if you're interested in talking, call me. And how can people connect with you through email? Um, well, if you go on our website, you can find, I believe, all of our emails. But um, mine is my name, Tomas Meloni at equamiaflowers.com yeah that's it there you go so Tomas Benoni, you equamia.com. and i promise you if you reach out to him and want to learn more about logistics or about the industry tomas will answer you don't make me look bad tomas <laughs> no but no tomas, I, tomas, tomas, I might tomas, take a few days because i'm a busy guy you know but yeah, I'm a fresh but, but he'll make an effort and if you offer him a drink he might sit down with you too so that's something that, that, tomas that might be very helpful you know that might that might get you that might get you places with me. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly will. Chicken wings will yeah. too. But yes. <laughs> Tomas, again, man, I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate the time. Um, I wish I would have contacted you in Ecuador. I wouldn't have been so so um, out of the sick. And, and it, was, it, it, was, it was something. But tell your audience, like, so remember, te de coca, te de guayusa, chocolate tea, and, you know, and there there's more. Go. But yeah, if, yeah, if you and, get sick over there. And, and I really recommend, again, everybody, go. Go to Ecuador in two years. Go check it out. It is a show that will keep your eyes open um, throughout the entire show. It's almost like a playground. There's a lot of connections, a lot of people. The party, I left early because I wasn't feeling well, but I heard the party went up to 4 a.m. in the morning. Uh, so it was, and the pictures I saw, it looked like Mardi Gras. It, it was just cool and people on stilts, and they went all out. And Alejandro... The president um, of, of Expo was hanging out there, too. So everybody's very well involved and, and really enjoying. And I think, Tomas, you got a lot out of it, and I got a lot out of it. So um, thank you to Expo for, for hosting that. And and thank you, Tomas, here to help, man, whenever you need anything, brother. And, and we should connect soon. Yeah, anytime. Thank you. All right, man. Take care, brother. You thank too. you again. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye-bye. So everybody, thank you for hanging out with a um, personal friend of mine, Tomas, and yourselves. You're all friends of the Bloom Show. So thank you very much. Do keep an eye out um, this, this month. I believe not next week, but the week after. We have the Marketing Round Table again. It's a recap from Marcher. We're having the floral board. We're having that, that flower feeling. We're having all the... Um, top people and the important people in that from Oscar um, to Jeannie Bose to Steve Dion to Yost um, to Eric Fernandez. And it's really going to be an opportunity to ask questions. You know, we, we leave this avenue for everybody to ask questions. And these are the opportunities we all have. Not we all, but there's people that have approached me and they're concerned and um, they have their doubts. 
ask the question straight up to clear those doubts. As we said, our industry tends to make our own roadblocks. Get your pick and hammer at the show and bring your questions to nail down those pick and hammer questions um, that you have concerns about and ask your questions because this will be a show to ask questions of both parties and hear from both parties at the same time. And you won't really get that much. So this will be an opportunity for you to dive in ask questions, learn more, and see, you know, how you could work and help on both of these uh, events because on both of these um, initiatives. And these initiatives are important to our end. I believe in them both. And I believe that that these initiatives are really going to help our industry grow, um, continue to grow, and they're not a roadblock. They're a tool to help us all grow. I haven't Pick the side. I just believe that at least people are making an initiative and making an effort in trying to do something different. So my heart goes off to all of them. I have some comments in here. So let's ask some, let's ask some questions. Um, nice hoodie, David Kaplan says. Yes, I am in love with this hoodie. I'm in love um, with the, the fabrication of this hoodie, Dave. It was something that um, I really needed to have it. And I got it. And you got to see the pants I'm wearing because I, I truly look like an Ecuadorian today um, with my pants that I got as a as a, as a set. And I was rocking it um, and loving it. Again, thank you, everybody, for joining. As always, if you enjoyed, subscribe. It keeps us inspired. It keeps us going. Um, subscribe and press the little alert key so you won't miss another episode. And thank you, everybody, for joining. It's truly an honor to have your, your time with us. Take care and see you next time. Keep an eye on LinkedIn. Keep an eye on the website, on our website at newbloomsolutions.com to know what shows are coming up. And you can keep an eye on the YouTube channel to know what shows are coming up. But keep an eye for our show that's coming up very soon. And we're really excited to be able to bring these two uh, marketing initiatives together. Take care.